Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So today I'm going to do a small fall landscape. Um, I'm going to have a go anyway. Uh, this is a piece of heavyweight, uh, this is I think um, arches, cold press, watercolour paper, at least 140 pounds. This is probably a bit thicker than that, but it's not crucial. I chose a thicker one because I'm painting quite small and I don't want it to buckle. Uh, the size of this is seven by four and a half inches. And um, so I've cut that to size. And next to that, I've got another piece, a piece which is slightly damaged because this is an old piece of paper. And I'm going to use that um, to do my testing on of the colors as I go along. And I've just uh, swatched out very quickly in the way that uh, doesn't take much time, the colors that I'm planning to use. Cerulean blue, lemon yellow, um, cadmium orange, quinacridone gold, permanent vermilion, olive green, sepia and burnt sienna. Um, so we're going to start off, I've chosen cerulean today for the sky because I think that's probably a better um, contrast with the oranges of the autumn sky. So we're going to start off with cerulean. <clears throat> you could use cobalt or ultramarine, but I wouldn't use uh, phthalo blue. Okay, so I'm using a size seven round nylon brush from um, Drawwell, and I'm just going to start off by dropping in a little bit of um, sky, making it kind of rough, not too much color needed there. And uh, just think sky while you're doing it and clouds and all that kind of thing. And realize that this is going to go behind the trees. So it's not crucial what it looks like, um, as long as it's there. And then the lemon yellow, uh, which is going to be kind of where the light is hitting the trees in the background. So we'll pop some of that in there and a little bit up here and um, maybe a little bit over here, because this is where the, there's going to be two main masses of trees, okay, in this painting that I'm going to attempt. And then there's going to be a, a sort of light. If you look at the photo from the end, I'm hoping that this is going to resemble that somewhat. Um, so there's going to be sort of light down the end of a track, which is coming down the front here. So um, I'm using a mixture of different kinds, different brands of paint uh, here. So it doesn't really matter which ones you use. I could have used my Kuretake set because all those colors, these colors are in there, but these are these are regular professional um, Winsor & Newton, Schmincke, uh, artists, Art Spectrum, stuff like that. Um, okay, so that's the first step. And then I'm going to pick up some cadmium orange and going to drop some of that in up here. And um, a little bit over here, just literally letting it um, letting the brush dance, so to speak, on the paper. And you'll get greys and things coming up where it hits the blue, because orange and blue makes kind of like grey colour. Um, so, yes, and we just bring a little bit down into the centre here. Just try and keep it light and try to leave holes in between the brush, brush strokes. We don't want any complete brush strokes here because we need to try and keep this really light. And now I'm picking up some permanent vermilion, which is a, a really strong orange. And I'm um, going to add that. And we'll sort of let that bleed in if we possibly can. If the paint is still wet where we just put the orange, just touch uh, around and about. Don't fill in the holes. I'll try to um, keep it as, as light as possible. 
and make more holes as you start to come down. Just want a little bit more yellow there, I think. <clears throat> so we'll put that in there like that. And uh, this is a lovely strong orange. I've, I've more or less run out of my art spectrum colours. They're Australian, um, but I'm going to try and get some more of them, I think. If I'm going to do landscapes, you can't, uh, can't go far wrong with art spectrum. I think you can get them in America. They do have a distributor over there, so keep your eyes open for those because it's a very nice, uh, beautiful uh, range of colours for the kind of landscapes that you get in America, especially in the areas down south, like New Mexico and Texas, I suppose, and California these days. So we just put a little bit of orange in the bottom there. This is the vermilion again. And maybe we'll put a little bit of um, cadmium orange over there with a little bit of vermilion. Like that, to make the foreground a little bit... Uh, covered with leaves, let's say. And then I need to uh, build up what I've got here. I need to bring down using cadmium orange, bring down some more tree leaves like that. Dropping in a bit more of the vermilion again. I was watching a Bob Ross uh, video yesterday. I've never really watched him um, because, well, he wasn't, he wasn't... I don't think he was around much in England, really, um, in those days. It was the 80s, wasn't it, mostly? Uh, but anyway, I had the pleasure last night of watching one of him painting a lake with... Uh, wonderful trees and everything. I mean, it's just took my breath away when he went from the beginning to the end. It's just amazing. He's incredible, isn't he? Oh, anyone can do it, he says. Anyone can do this. <laughs> yes, well, yes. I suppose you could. Anyone could if they spent enough time learning how. It, it does take work painting does, learning how to paint, and as L.S. Lowry, the famous English painter from years gone by, said, painting is damned hard work. Yeah, it is, and some of us feel that so much, you know, eventually you kind of feel like giving up. I think all of us have had moments like that, I know I have. I nearly sold all my stuff about 10 years ago. I literally had it advertised. And then things kind of transpired. I found a good class that I went to and that made all the difference, so I kept going. <clears throat> so I'm just building up the golds here a little bit. I've just added a little bit of quinacridone gold here. You do need to keep the colours um, varied. And um, we're coming up here with a few bits and pieces of leaves going into the sky, perhaps. And, uh, okay, so I don't want to put too much down in the foreground. Let's pick up a little bit of burnt sienna, maybe. Down here, and maybe a little bit over here. And I think we need to come into the centre a bit, so just imagine bushes in the distance. So everything's gone red.
Okay, so now we're at that point where I think we need a little bit of yellow in the middle. So that's lemon yellow again, to fill in that area there. And then perhaps we'll pick up some olive green and we'll just dance a little bit of green into the trees, a little bit up here. And a little bit down here. This is a style of watercolour that I don't do very often. So this is actually quite a good, um, what's the word, learning experience for me too. Because, yeah, I don't, I don't paint like this very often. And then we'll want to put some dark shadows. So I've got some sepia here and I'm going to mix that with a little bit of olive green to make a darkness, which will go down at the bottom of the trees here and maybe over here. You notice we haven't yet put in any of the um, tree trunks or anything like that. And all of these strokes are all broken strokes, but they're going to blend with one another and hopefully come out looking reasonably natural. And these paints also, you know, they, as I've said so many times, they do dry much lighter so you have to keep coming in again if you want to maintain that brightness. You've got to let it dry a little bit and then come in with another um, layer. Put a bit of um, cadmium. Cadmium is good because it's uh, semi-opaque, cadmium orange, whereas I think the vermilion is more transparent. Yeah, it doesn't say on the back of the tube. I think it is, though. Put a little bit of green up here. And then we're going to put some Quinacridone gold and vermilion down here. Let's put some strokes in horizontally. And strengthen this up a little bit here. And imagine a few more sort of piles of leaves going into the distance there. And then I'm going to think about putting in the trees, I mean the actual branches. In a second. I'm just darkening these darks, just making the darks a bit darker. Up here a little bit too, and I'm probably going to have to wait for it to dry before I put the 
the branches in because otherwise I might find that I'm going to get too much bleeding. And, uh, put in some darks down here. This is sepia mixed with oh, olive green. Still leaving some of the lights because you want to give the impression that light is being caught coming through the trees. This bit here is running a little bit too much so I'm going to wait for that to dry and then I'll put a dark on top of that. And I'm just going to see, quite often in the autumn you get these um, strong contrasts between trunks of trees and branches and so on. We can put some of those in in these gaps. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then I'll come in and put some tree trunks over the foliage. Okay, so that's completely dry now and what I'm going to do is, so that I can get an idea of how to arrange the branches and things, I'm going to use a piece of tracing paper and I'm going to pop that over the top there and then <clears throat> I'm going to just sketch in where I want the branches to go and uh, it's just really a sort of confidence trick because you'd probably be fine without it, but I, I don't, uh, haven't done a landscape like this for a while, so I'm just sort of thinking I would do it like that so that I can see where I want things to go. And so that's my guide there that I've already done just now. And then I'm going to pick up a rigger. I don't know if everyone has one, but it's just a a thin, long-haired brush. Uh, this is about a size three, I think. And um, they call them riggers or, uh, what do they call them, liners? Um, script liners, that's right. Um, is, is There's not really a script liner, actually. It's more of, a, it's called a rigger, basically. Um, if you can get one, it's useful for things like this. And um, then I'm just going to refer to my sketch and just try to um, continue the branches using the rigger because that gives you a lot more freedom for, for branches. Especially coming out out here where we want some twiggy bits. Sometimes it's easier to start from the end of the branch. And come down. Some nice fine twigs. And sometimes it's fun to do a very small painting. It's 
sort of less work. And we're going to put a few more leaves on top once we've put in these, the, the structure. And a little bit of um, shadow here, we just darken up these strokes here, make them a bit more pungent. I haven't used any violet or any mauves or any bluish reds at all in this to try to keep hold of the autumn feel, because if you start going violet, I think you could begin to be wintry, if you know what I mean. We go to the bluish side a bit later in the month, or next month rather. Just very light. Okay, so we'll leave that like that for a second. Oh, wait a minute. I think I'll just put a couple of little dark patches here amongst the autumn leaves and then I'm going to uh, I'm not do it with green of course I'm not a little bit more of the permanent vermilion and we'll just drop that in on top Maybe some cadmium yellow, orange too. And the quinacridone gold wants to take part, keeps jumping onto my brush. Don't cover up the white bits, takes a bit of concentration to keep it light. Okay, and now I think I need to let that dry and we'll see what's what. So that's dry now, and uh, the only thing that remains to be done really is to come in with a little bit of Chinese white and um, just restore any whites that you have lost in the process. Chinese white's the traditional um, color to use for this. Um, you can use any other white. You could use um, this one here, Dr. P.H. Martin's or, you know, any, any white. But uh, there's just one or two little spots where I think it could benefit from a little bit more light. And, uh, and there, there we are, that's it. One little very autumnal um, mini landscape on a piece of paper which is quite small and would easily make a nice card for somebody or even a gift because if you pop it in a frame, you'll be amazed how wonderful your art looks if you just stick it in a frame. So. Um, yeah, have a look on Facebook, actually, if you want to see this one in a little frame um, at one of our groups. Check the description below for the colours that you need for this one and any other information which I may have forgotten to give you. So <clears throat> there we are. Happy autumn, everyone. Bye bye for now.